Welcome to The Greatness in You. I'm Will Horton. Our programs are designed to motivate, inspire, and empower you. Today, our topic is greatness. You have the power to give rise to your greatness. Think of becoming great, and your thoughts will give rise to the greatness in you. Joining me today to talk about greatness is a very talented actor and playwright, Paul Oakley Stovall. Welcome to The Greatness in You, Paul. Thank you. And first, let me say congratulations on your show. Thank you. It is Thank great. You. Thank you. You said you were going to interview <laughs> me, right? You're practicing what you <laughs> preach. <laughs> so I like it. Paul, you, you're no stranger to the theater community. I've seen you in numerous plays here in yeah. Chicago, and you've had works in New York as well. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about those works. Uh, a lot of it is luck. I'm happy to call myself a lucky person. I think luck is uh, opportunity meeting preparation. Mm -hmm. And I started my career purely as an actor. I went to DePaul University and studied the craft. I think that you can make it any number of ways, but it's also always good to have a foundation of education. You know, mm -hmm. um, So I started my career acting at the Goodman here in Chicago. And a few years into it, I was challenged by someone who told me that I couldn't write. And that's all I needed to empower me mm -hmm. to move forward with doing it. So obstacles are my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, my works have now been produced in San Diego, Los Angeles, New York, uh, in smaller venues in Chicago, and now, of course, I'm fortunate enough to have this large production at the Goodman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And congratulations. Thank you. You have a new uh, American play, and let's talk about that at the yeah. Goodman Theater, called Immediate Family. Mm -hmm. What motivated you to write this play? It, it deals with so many issues in yeah. our family. Well, again, I'll try not to be too repetitious on mm -hmm. the show, but someone told me I couldn't. And so that uh, motivated me. Mm -hmm. And when I was considering what story I would tell, I think because I was a new playwright, I just, it was very uh, natural for me to talk about my own life and my own experiences. Not in a purely autobiographical way, which a lot of people think, but more in the true experiences I've had in life and mixing them all together into the story that you saw. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I saw the play I know. and I loved it and I'm gonna be inviting some of my friends here Please do. to come down and see it. Uh, you address many issues in the mm -hmm. play that we don't like to talk about. Yeah. Uh, it took a certain amount of courage, did it not, to, to write about these issues? Well, I talk about uh, sexuality, in particular homosexuality in the black community and how we handle it or don't handle it. I talk about our black American heroes, uh, and some are our black African heroes. I talk about Mandela a bit, and who we choose to be our heroes and why, uh, and who can do great things, but will not be acknowledged by our community. Uh, I talk about uh, the, the issues of skin tone within the black community. You did, And yes. uh, how we will rise up the Tyras and the Halleys, but Viola Davises have to struggle to get through. And why is that? When mm -hmm. we're all a member of the same immediate family. Mm -hmm. So I know I tried to pack it all in in 90, 90 minutes, but I think, uh, there are issues that we, we can change with the snap of a finger. So why create some long, long drama when we just need to get to the point? You also talked about racial intolerance. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh -huh. uh, in, in a flipped way, too. You yes. Know? Uh, not just whites being intolerant. Right. Which exactly. is, can be written from you know, a number of points of view, but it wasn't so much that I wanted to write about how blacks can be racist. That's not what I'm saying in the show. Mm -hmm. I actually am one of the people who believes that if you're not the, uh, if you're not the group that's in power, you, you cannot really be racist. But you can be intolerant. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about how opening ourselves is the way to get over that. You know, being resistant in life and being negative begets more negativity. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to talk about how letting that down, letting that go, focusing on those that are in your life that you love, can bring all number of incredible things to you, like the lead female finds out at the end of the play. Mm -hmm. She thinks she's losing everything, 
right. and by the last moment of the show, if I'm not giving away too much, she realizes how much she's actually gaining right. by letting it in. And, and you yeah. and you kind of touched on drugs, alcohol, which is the drugs, but you didn't touch on the other types of drugs. Is, is there a reason why you didn't do that? Uh, it didn't come organically to mm -hmm. the piece. Uh, I think those things are spoken about enough in other uh, art forms and other plays. Um, it's certainly a reality in the community, but uh, I had other things I was interested in talking about. For instance, there was, uh, you probably know, you, you maybe you've heard of Rhyme Fest, the mm -hmm. rapper, the yes. Grammy Award winning rapper. Exactly. He came to a Sunday matinee and we had a talk back and he hopefully won't mind that I bring this up. He was one of the first people to raise his hand and say, listen, the heterosexual black man in the show had such an easy time with it. And I, don't you think that that's really not true? That it's such an issue that it would have been more fractious and more tension? And I said, well, you know, but th that, that may be true of some people, but in my experience and what I wanted to put into the world was a positivity, right. in particular in the character that we expect to be the most intolerant. Um, I think it's very easy to have an angry black man on stage. That's easy, and to me it's frankly a bit boring. I right. want to show I want to show what the future can be and not keep muddling around. Immediate yeah. Family is directed by someone we all call America's mom. Yes. How did this relationship come to be? The mother of the black community, uh, she was actually officially called that. Uh, Denzel Washington gave her the award, and that's mm -hmm. Felicia Rashad. Mm -hmm. She and I, uh, we worked on the workshop of a new musical, uh, Ntozaki Shange, who wrote for Colored Girls. Mm -hmm. Her sister, Aoife Baiza, wrote a new musical uh, called Charleston Olio, and Felicia and I both ended up being a part of the uh, development process of that musical. Mm -hmm. So we met working as actors. And, you know, no, you know we did this down in Mississippi, no, you know, there, no cameras, no nothing. We were just in the room working, and I got to see her as the artist that she is, and, and the humanitarian that she is. And it really appears that you really the two of you really admire each other and respect yeah, each other. Yeah. And I noticed you didn't complain when she changed the set, number, <laughs> number of sections. I thanked her. <laughs> uh, she often says, you know, I think we're Siamese twins. So something just clicked. Uh, and the things that needed to change, it was almost like she swooped in and saw what I needed and mm -hmm. she made that happen. Uh, she also convinced me to take the play from eight locations to one. Right. Um, having worked with August Wilson a lot before he passed, she said, you know, the house can be a character in the show. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have all these other distracting locations, you can focus more on the family. And I like the way yeah. they place the art in the show. I'm an art collector and lover. Ah, that's actually my godfather who did that art. Yes. Um, I like to keep it in the family. And uh, he's a self-taught artist, a city worker who uh, decided one day he wanted to expand himself and started painting. Now there's paintings. All He changed one room in the house into an art studio. And I love that. My cousin Dana Devine, who's on uh, Sunday Morning's Inspiration on WGCI, it's her music that plays before and after the show. Oh, it is? I didn't I know I like that. keeping it in the family. Yes, yeah. I see. It's great that you're keeping it all in the family. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll hear what our friends on Facebook are saying about greatness. But first, I thought you might like to hear what people on the street are saying about today's hot topic. To me, greatness is failing forward. No matter what happens in life, you continue to get back up and keep moving on with your life in the direction of where you want to go. Greatness is something like that you'll be for, for something you've done. Greatness is from within. Greatness is what you tap into every morning when you feel that, you know, you can be better than before. Discover the personal powers that unlock the genius and the greatness in you. Will Horton, author of the Wisdom for Greatness series, has written a breakthrough book, The 30 Power Principles, 30 life-changing principles that will help to give birth to your greatness. The 30 Power Principles can help you awaken and bring forth infinite possibilities for happiness, health, success, and greatness. Buy it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. Wisdom Keys, Great Proverbs and Sayings by Will Horton. 
is a four-book collection of timeless proverbs and sayings that provide sage advice and guidance for successful living. They are a fountain of knowledge that will inspire, motivate, and empower you to achieve greatness. Book 1. Ability to Extraordinary. Book 2. Failure to Knowledge. Book 3. Lack to Purpose. Book 4. Quarrel to You. Will Horton's Proverbs and Sayings are rules of conduct for successful living. Buy the four-book set at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400. Shipping is free. Wisdom Keys for Greatness, Rules of Success for Teens, Book and Workbook by Will Horton will get you ready for success. Rules of Success for Teens prepares you for future success and greatness. The rule of conduct for tomorrow's success is to prepare for it today. Be ready to board the success train when it stops at your station in life. Buy them at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. Welcome back. We're talking about greatness. Before the break, we began talking to Paul Oakley Stovall, about how he gave birth to his greatness. Set your sights on greatness and work to reach your highest level of achievement. If you want to become great, you have to aim high. Number one, think great thoughts. Great thoughts gives rise to great successes. Number two, be prepared. Be ready for opportunities. Number three, be enthusiastic. Enthusiasm powers perseverance. Number four, keep enduring hope. Hope strengthens you. Number five, keep faith. Faith gives you the confidence you need for success. Let's go to Facebook and see what people are saying about greatness. Our reporter, Crescencia, is joining me. Thank you so much, Will. Dora said, I measure greatness when I look at all the beautiful things around me. Crystal said, our mindsets are truly the most powerful instrument ever. We just need to learn how to use it in our best interest. Back to you, Will. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to get up close and personal with Paul Oakley Stovall. Stay with us. Martin Luther King Jr. is a hero, an inspirational book for children from early childhood through middle and late childhood. Martin Luther King Jr. is a hero will help parents and children better plan their life's journey, aim, and destination. The book will help young children give birth to their dreams. Buy it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400. As always, shipping is free. Make your child head of the class. Head of the Class Early Childhood Development Center. Committed to excellence in education. Call 773-721-7500. For the best in limousine service, ride with a butler. Call Butler Limousine, 708-758-5466. Welcome back. I have the very talented actor and playwright Paul Oakley Stovall with me. You've been writing since the age of 16. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this first writing experience, which was a poetry book, I understand. Oh, you got me. Oh, you did get me. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I have been writing 
earlier than that, but I first started taking myself seriously at 16. And within my school, they brought in a professor who uh, was working with an after-school program for creative writing. So it was outside of the curriculum. And uh, I guess, and this is the way I understand poetry now, for me, it's quick storytelling. And I think I had a knack for it. So I wasn't even calling it poetry. I was able to get from the beginning to the middle to the end of a story quickly. And this man was impressed enough that uh, the amount of output that I was creating in the class, he said, you know, you've got a collection here. Next thing I knew, I was published at 16. In, in that bold move from poet to actor to playwright, <laughs> did, did you ha ever have fears that you would fail? Always. I'm, I still do. But that's part of the journey is overcoming it. Do you see your fear as something that will defeat you and consume you? Or do you see fear as something to overcome and battle and grapple with and take control of? So, yeah. so what techniques did you use to overcome your fears? Was it positive thinking? Was it just a lot well, of self-confidence? A, self a, <laughs> a lot of props to my mother mm -hmm. who did not allow my brother and I to give up on things. She made sure we saw things through to the end. She didn't mind if we changed from basketball to the swim team to the theater and, and if we couldn't, because for her it was like that's part of growing up. You, you, you don't know who you want to be yet. But she said, you can never give up. You, you can switch around to figure out what it is you're good at or what you want to pursue. But I never want you to change because you give up, because you think you can't do it. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll find out what life lessons he's learned. Stay with us. Will Horton Power Thoughts on Hopes and Dreams and Will Horton Power Thoughts on Success and Winning are a recipe for success. They will help you give life to your hopes and dreams and put you in the power zone. Power Thoughts condition your mind to triumph over negativity and the powerless thoughts that lead to hopelessness and lowered ambitions. They condition your mind for success. You become what you dream, believe, expect, and have faith that you will achieve. These power thoughts will motivate, inspire, and empower you to achieve success and greatness. Buy them at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400. Shipping is free. Will Horton's Power Quotes is a six-volume collection of power quotes that will get you in the power zone. Volume 1, Power for Dreams. Volume 2, Power for Success. Volume 3, Power for Hopes. Volume 4, Power for Winning. Volume 5, Power for Greatness. Volume 6, Power for Life. Future success awaits those who make the best use of the present, says Horton. Will Horton's Power Quotes, the six-volume set, is available at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. Discover the personal powers that unlock the genius and greatness in you. Will Horton, author of the Wisdom for Greatness series, has written a breakthrough book, The 30 Power Principles, 30 life-changing principles that will help to give birth to your greatness. The 30 Power Principles can help you awaken and bring forth infinite possibilities for happiness, health, success, and greatness. Buy it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, or call Wisdom Books at 773-445-2400 for free shipping. Welcome back. We're talking about greatness with Paul Oakley Stovall. What are some lessons, life lessons, you've learned? Always know that your best is good enough. So do your best. And to add on to that, even if you're rejected, don't take that personally. Because if you know you've done your best, then it's the other person's loss. 
if you're not hired for the job or even in matters of the heart, or whatever it may be. If you are your best and doing your best, know that that's good enough. And more often than not, you'll get positive results. Uh, another one is learn, learning to say no. A lot of us want to be people pleasers. We want, um, we want to be admired and accepted. So we sometimes will veer off of our course and do things that don't feel right to us. I think you must learn to say no. I was talking to Kathy the, over there. She said, oh, yeah, I need to learn that one. That's one for me. <laughs> right. Um, I think that, OK, all those we things all are need quite to learn serious. That. We all need to learn that. And I do, too. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm yes. still working on it. Exactly. Um, exercise patience and, and take time to enjoy life. It can't be grind, grind, grind all the time. Uh, oftentimes when I'm relaxing or not thinking about work, it's when inspiration will come. You have to make room for inspiration to come. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You can't always be, you know, on the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. um, it's often when I'm taking a deep breath, ah, that's what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, always know who is really in your corner and in your circle and act accordingly. Know who has your back. And uh, don't lie to yourself about it. Mm. We, we know when someone's really there for you or when they're there to meet Felicia Rashad, for instance. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yes. So know who's really in your corner and act accordingly. And lastly, just know that giving is receiving. That you get the most when you give the most. Your life could have been different because at yeah. 21, mm -hmm. you were shot in both legs. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that experience. I had just graduated from university. My life was right there ahead of me. I'd been cast as the lead role in a major production in Minneapolis. Six days into rehearsal, uh, a knock came on the door at the apartment where I was staying. And I was staying with uh, one of my fellow actresses, mm -hmm. a fellow actor. Uh, she was playing the lead female, and I was playing opposite her. And, uh, you know, my housing wasn't ready yet, so I was just staying with her. And her boyfriend was staying there, too. So she wasn't home, and he was into some nefarious business, and some people came looking for him. And long story short, they shot me by accident, thinking that I was him. And more important than uh, that I survived it are two things. He was in the apartment. And the people who shot, they shot through the door. So they didn't come in to see who they hit, and they left. He came into the living room and saw me there and made the decision to run. So what I thought was going to be the last person that I would see alive decided not to help me. Number two is someone called that ambulance. Mm -hmm. And I, just through the course of events of being in the hospital, recovering, and everything that I went through, I never did get to go back and try and find out which neighbors in the apartment building called the ambulance. So someone that I'll never meet saved my life. So those two things just led me to grace. I could, I could have been angry about being shot, about the person that meant that was supposed to, I, don't, I wouldn't say anyone is ever supposed to be shot, but the person that they wanted to shoot, that he decided to leave me for dead, mm -hmm. that could have turned me down an angry road and I had a rough six months you know, in a wheelchair and trying to learn how to walk again, but maybe it is that nurturing that my mother always gave me, that you, you focus more on how lucky you are to be alive. One inch to the right or left, and that bullet hits my femur and shatters it, or hits my lower spine, because I heard the click of the gun, so I jumped away from the door. So. Even that split second of grace, that I was just moved away from the door. Uh, I mean, and then again, I could also say, wow, if, that, if none of that had happened to me, who knows what career I could have had. You know, I was 21, I was just starting. But uh, I'm coming up to my second 21 years, and uh, I'm not too unpleased with the way things are going now, so. Many young African-American yeah. males do not live to be, be beyond the age of 26. Yeah. Many feel hopeless. What advice, very quickly, do you have for those young men? Mm -hmm. 
believe in yourself. Know that there is a world outside the world that you feel trapped in. Explore. Do not get caught up in, oh, this one want to drag you over here, this one want to drag you over here. Be courageous enough to be alone. Because that's what happens. Those who go for it, oftentimes you get rejected by your friends. Oh man, well, you, you can't do that. You, you, you know, be courageous enough to be alone. It's not so bad to be alone. Great advice, Paul. Thanks for sharing. Sure. Tell us where we can see the play. My pleasure. The play is called Immediate Family, and you can see it at the Goodman Theater downtown running through August 5th. Go to goodmantheater.org for tickets. Thank you for joining us on The Greatness in You. I want to hear from you. Send me your success stories or comments about success and greatness. Email me at willhorton at the 30powerprinciples.com. Friend me on Facebook at Will Horton. Follow me on Twitter at Will underscore Horton. I look forward to meeting you one day and hearing about your journey to success and greatness. Remember, you have to give birth to the greatness in you. This has been a W. Wharton production.